it's Beck here and I just wanted to wish you a happy new year and wish you all the best for 2024. Uh, I just wanted to share with you some of the ideas that I've got for the coming year and um, yeah that's about it really. Um, I've decided some of my new year's resolutions are going to be one finished projects because I've got far too many <laughs> than what I thought I'd got. Two I want to try and make it a go on Patreon so that's should be coming soon me and my husband are just working the kinks out in the you know the background stuff what we need to do and yeah i just want to focus on you know getting things finished because i've got quite a lot of things that i want to get done and when i first set the channel up um i can't remember how long ago it was now um i want i called it becca's crafts because i do quite a lot of crafts different ones and whenever i want to try something i like to give it my best go at it as best i can um so that was why i did the, one of the reasons why i did the channel the other ones because of my kids which i mentioned before in a video and um and i've sort of i've gravitated towards quilling and then i went to uh, i've gone more towards clay and beading and things like that but i do a lot more that's behind the scenes than what i actually do on camera so i'm wanting to share more of that with you and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. I'm still going to be doing the tutorials exactly the same as what I was doing before. Um, if I manage to get Patreon up and running, it's just going to be in addition to what I already do. Uh, this coming year, it's my 40th birthday, which I'm not happy about. <laughs> Don't seem two minutes since I turned 30. Uh, and then my son that is homeschooled at the moment, he will start college later on in the year. So I'm going to be left at home with no children to uh, mind over during the day. So I want to try and get some things in place so that I can focus on something else rather than that my babies are leaving the nest. I know they're not leaving, but <laughs> it's, it's going to be strange not having them in the house with me. Um, so yeah, this is why I just I want to have it go. And I think because it's my 40th birthday, I want to try and think of something that means I've done something special for that. Um, yeah, sorry, I keep saying um a lot, so I do apologise if that gets annoying. <laughs> just fast forward me. <laughs> so, but anyway, what I want to talk to you about today is English paper piecing. Now, I learned how to do this quite some years ago now, uh, back when I ran a crafting club. And we met on a weekly basis, and it would just basically bring along whatever you're doing, and we'd be chatting away, and we'd have uh, cups of tea and cake, and it was really good fun. Um, then Covid hit and it sort of just all dissolved from there really. Um, but I did learn how to do English paper piecing. One of the lovely ladies brought her piece that she'd been doing for years and she wanted to get it finished. So, But as soon as we all saw it we were like, oh, you know, we need to learn how to do this. Um, so we all did this joint effort of making a really big quilt top and we were trying to raise some money for the uh, local scout group. Now this one is just one that I've been doing on my own. Now, as you can see, I've done a fair bit already, but it needs to be a lot bigger for it to fit my bed. So I've got a long way to go on this one. This is just using hexagons. Now the little hexagons, I'll show you. I used to have a big crop machine, a tape cutting machine. Uh, and it also cut uh, fabric as well and I had all the dies that um, cut the card out and the paper and things like that so I got accurate cuts with this but then when I got my new Gemini machine um, I thought I don't really need that anymore now and I'm kicking myself that I didn't keep it and um, if I can land on one really really cheap I will want to get it again simply because it just makes this a lot easier but you can do it without having one of these big shops because they've been doing it for centuries this type of uh, sewing so it's just it makes it a lot easier and quicker i like to use left uh, sort of used christmas cards birthday cards that sort of you know the thin card type stuff from the shop bought cards and i just cut them up once uh, they're not going to be up on the wall if i'm not saving them anymore i just cut i've cut them up and this is a i think this is a one inch hexagon if i remember right Yes, it is. So that just means that this edge is just one inch. So each of them, those is an inch. Uh, I think it, let's see how big it is. So it's just about two inches. Yeah, it's two inches wide. So that's one little hexagon. So to do this, as you can see, I've been cracking on a bit, but I found out my um, 
stash. I think it was just before Christmas. And I um, thought, so, oh, I'll just get a, a few more hexagons cut up and sewn and all that. And then I got the box. And this is all my little bits of fabric that I cut up from past projects or just ones that I've got a little bit of and just, yeah. I've cut them up into squares that are going to be big enough for the hexagon. Um, so I've been sat on an evening doing these, this is, which is what I'm going to be showing you uh, how to stack it round and uh, how to join them together. I'm not going to show you the full process of doing it today. I'm just going to do you a little bit of an intro to it. Um, so, yeah, I've got this massive pile <laughs> of these, but I want to get all of my um, fabric shoes done because I want this to be completely random. I don't want it to have any repetition. So like the certain bits that have got loads of yellow over there or they've got loads of pink and blue. I want it to just be everywhere. So that's the idea. So I'm using all the fabrics up and just getting all these done. <laughs> I've got a lot done but I've got a lot more to do. Uh, so I can swish them up and then whenever I'm doing it I can just put my hand in, grab one and then I know it's going to be random because I struggle with random. I always seem to want to find a pattern or just something that's more pleasing to the eye or something like that anyway and I always think when I see people's work that's random I think oh, I wish I could do that and I always question myself whereas I think this would probably be a good way for me to be able to do it without too much thinking think I do <laughs> so yeah I'm going to show you how I've been taking the fabric to them it's not the only way that you can do it you can use a um, dry glue stick but I prefer to tack them I've tried doing it and I found that the uh, fabric was uh, peeling off so <laughs> I'm knocking my light up <laughs> that's not a good start to you is it so yeah and this is the sort of thing that you're going to see with me doing this new type of filming where you can see what I'm doing behind the camera so right, I'm going to get these out of the way now there we go so I've got a massive bag of these not a very good shot there we are so if you've not got a die cutting machine you can uh, make yourself a template and you can draw around the outside uh, and then you can uh, cut it either with scissors or a guillotine. I will warn you if you're cutting it by scissors it cannot it might not be as accurate as what it can be when you're using a guillotine and that's one thing that you need when you're doing English paper piecing is precision on your cuts and for your shapes to go together. Um, because when you're doing machine quilting and things like that you can sort of stretch the fabric a little bit more and but where, whereas this, you want them to all tessellate together and build a bigger pattern in the end. So you need your base shapes to be as accurate as you can possibly get them. Now, if you've already got some templates that you can use, that's great, that's fine. I mean, even if you've got a cutter like these that are behind me, you could use that as a template to draw around the, either the inside or the outside with pencil on your card and cut them out that way. I can't cut them out by hand because my hands shake too much. I have tried and it was just an epic fail. So I'm sticking to these ones for now. When I run out of them, I don't know what I'm going to do if I've not found a, a die that's the same shape. I have got some hexagons, but I don't know whether if I've got it this small. Anyway, I'll stop babbling on. And I'm going to turn that camera on again now. Now you've listened to me waffle on for a little while. And then make sure, because you need to make sure that you can see me okay. Get them out of the way. Right, so the fabric needs to be slightly bigger than um that. Let's put that one on. I didn't press record. Needs to be bigger than your actual hexagon. So what colour shall I go with for today? I'll just pick them. See this is it, I can't do random right. I'm just gonna pick these. I'm trying not to look at them, I'm trying to be random. I really <laughs> there, I've got these bits. Now the way I like to stack it around is using thread and a needle. So you just need a nice strong needle. And this is why you need the softer type of card. You can use a thicker paper if you've got that. Um, but like I said, I like to recycle as much as I can do when I'm doing things like this. So in fact, let me zoom in just a little bit more so you're not going to see what I'm doing. Okay. See, I've got it. 
<laughs> I thought I'd got it balanced. We'll do it that way instead. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you can see that or not. Oh dear, this is great chaos. Right, so just get your needle threaded up. This is just normal cheap thread. It doesn't need to be anything special for this. Now, whether I do it or not, is so like I went the finger and then I just wrap it around my finger and then I roll it. And you get a knot, but you need quite a big knot. So if it doesn't turn out to be as big as you think it needs to be, just do it again. If you want to do your knot another way, then do it another way. This is just how my mum taught me when I was growing up how to do it. So this is the way that I do it. Right, so there we go. So pick up your needle. So you want to get your fabric needs to be bigger than your actual shape because this is a, a hexagon. Obviously, it's got different points to what a normal square is, but it would just easier for me to cut this out. I used a rotary cutter and uh, my quilting ruler just to do it that way. You can trim off the excess. Um, I have another project on the go that uh, I'm going to show you in a different video, and I cut the more of the excess off around the outside. Um, so I'm just really got that in my uh, glasses. Um, but I'm using squares and shapes that look like a little um, beach hut. But like I said, I'll show you that in another video. So you just want to take your um, piece of card uh, to the uh, fabric. Make sure your pattern's on the bottom side like this. I'm thinking you can see down there <laughs> on that one and you can't. So yeah, just make sure that you've inverted fabrics at the bottom. And I like to start with it so I've got a flat edge at the top. And you just want to fold it over. And I like to just sort of press it with my fingers just to make it get to how I want it to be. So, and then you're just going to push the card from the back to the front. That way you've got your knot in the back. And then when it comes to taking these shapes out, uh, these are the ones that you remove and you're not going to touch any of the uh, stitches that you've done further on. So then what we're wanting to do is we're needing to tack all these corners down really, really well. So I'm pushing back up just a little ways forward, just so I'm closer to where this edge is. And then I just want to fold that one over so it goes right up to the edge of the hexagon, you know, the cardboard shape. And then just push through with that. This is why you need a good strong needle. And it's a good idea to try and have fabric that's all the same weight, just so that um, it doesn't have as much tension on it. So, say if you've got some thicker fabrics and then you're using some really thin ones, um, it's it's better. To, you can use any, but it's just for the tension and things like that. You're be best off, you know, trying to find fabric that's roughly the same weight, which is what I'm trying to say. So now, if your fabric, uh, your fabric, your card's thin enough, you can weave in around the shape but I prefer to just do it one bit at a time so I can get it as accurate as I can. So then once I've gone down in the corner I come up back in the middle so I'm ready to go to the next corner, fold that over and then go through there again. Now this is a really good thing for you to be able to do in front of the telly which is what I've been doing over Christmas. I've been watching uh, the Christmas shows I've been watching uh, uh, all, all the past uh, Mrs. Brown, Brown Boys um, Christmas specials, which are hilarious. So, um, yeah, it's just been something from that. And I can just keep my hands busy and trying to have some downtime. Because I said that I wasn't going to do uh, much filming over the Christmas period. Oh, my thread's come out. Um, just so that I give myself a break, because you can get a bit burned out doing uh, YouTube videos. Now, threading my needle, I find it just wet the end a little bit and then pop it in that way now sometimes yeah got that in sometimes i can get it in the first go and then most of the time i can't <laughs> so uh, yeah it can take me a while so i'm glad it went in that time what were i saying oh yeah i've been watching telly and um it's just reminded me of all the christmases past and things like that and when we first watched these programs and it's sort of become a, a Christmas tradition for us. Um, me and my husband like to uh, watch all the old ones back and, uh, you know, just have a giggle all over again. So, nearly at the end. I'm 
Oh, let's tack it down. See that you wouldn't know that it's not got it's got a, a corner on it that's not got any pattern which is on the back because it's just landed the way that it is. So I think this fabric was from I got Kirsty Holsop. Um oh it was some sort of craft kit years ago, I can't remember. And I ended up with two of them and uh it was a pattern for a, a pinny, uh, a cooking pinny or apron, depending on uh, what you like to call them. And I thought, well, I'll cut that up as well, because I'd already got one. I didn't want two of the same thing. So that's where that one's come from. Right, right. we're back at the beginning now where we started off. Now, as you can see here, I've still got this flap here. So I just fold it down like you usually would do. And then push through. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to do a, a tacking stitch, just to hold it in place so that it doesn't come undone, uh, but you're not putting another knot into it. So instead of going back up one of these that you've already done, just come, I like to come a bit further down underneath it and come through, back up and then try and find, if you can see, where the cotton's already gone through, I like to pass through, back through that one and then I come up again through the lower down one that we've done. That way it stops the cotton from coming undone until you're ready for it doing and then when you're ready for doing it you can just use your unpicker and pick them out right so i'm just going to show you how to work quickly put one of these together so let's pick oh i'm doing the random thing what did we get oh we got another blue oh well that one's got cotton round in i don't know why oh well <laughs> it's got tangled up with something else never mind right so with your two hexagons right so you just want to get put them face to face so you've got two right sides together okay and then you want to take your thread again now if you want to use a bit stronger cotton uh, for doing this but you can do but this is just what I've been using and it's been fine so I'll just put a, a knot in the end and I've found it's easier if I use if I'm doing a fair few of these use a short piece of thread when you're doing it because when you're coming through all the time um, it can get tangled if your thread's really really long and it can be so frustrating trying to get those knots out so just see if you can see now so when I start off I like to go underneath one of the flaps if you can see it better on there so I'm gonna go underneath one of these so I'm just gonna go push up right at the end see right where two corners meet and then that will conceal the the knot out of the way now we're not going to be going through the cardboard when we're actually sewing these together we're just going to take the uh, top fibers and you'll be able to feel the cardboard as you're pushing through with your needle and all we're going to do is whip stitch all the way along and this is how the magic happens so you just keep doing this try and keep your stitches fairly close together because you don't want to have any gaps when you open it up so that uh, when you only open the grabby hole basically um so yeah just try and sort of you can wiggle your needle and it will you'll sort of feel the card uh you know that's underneath so you'll be able to feel the fibers of the fabric and then after a while, when you've done as many as I have now, you can do it sometimes without even really looking. But then I end up stabbing myself with a needle. I have got the needle up my nail and uh, stuck in the end of my thumb so many times this Christmas. It's unreal. <laughs> so that's probably me uh, that should learn a lesson not to, to not to stitch while I'm not looking at it. But uh, yeah, I think it becomes muscle memory eventually when you've done so many of these. It's like riding a bike. You sort of you learn how to do it and you don't think about it after then. You sort of think, all right, I've learned it, I can do that. But I suppose that's a bit cocky of me, isn't it? Saying I can do it with my eyes shut. But I can type with my uh, eyes shut as well, but that's the uh, secretary in me. But anyway, right, let's just make sure that camera's not uh, run out. I get about 20 minutes on that before I have to work restart the the clip. So that's why I have to keep checking on it. So if I keep doing this, 
<laughs> That's what I'm doing. We got nearly at the end. And this is one of the easiest types of sewing that you can really do. Once you've mastered how to do it well and getting your precise shapes and things like that, I mean, you could do it with just squares. You know, if you didn't want to do hexagons, use squares. That way you can cut them with just with a ruler and a craft knife or with a guillotine if you've got one. Um, you could draw them out and use scissors if you've got a... Uh, steady hands which I really haven't so I like my guillotine and things like that which make my life a lot easier so I've got right to the end and then you want to make sure that your corner is going to be joined well so come back through the fibers again but instead of pulling all the way through you've got this bit of a, a loop left over it opens up and then just put your needle through and then pull it tight down to the bottom and then snip it off and then you open it up and you've got your two little hexagons attached to each other so i'm going to turn this one off now there we go you don't need to see me doing that anymore. so when we did the really big one we just did really long lengths of these and then uh we sort of like it was at the beginning of lockdown and we uh sort of like i went between each of the house people's houses and i dropped off some hexagons or picked up some ones at the zone and then uh i put the get strip because like people had sew them together into strips like this and then i uh, sew them the long lengths down and it ended up an epic quilt top it was massive it was so heavy um but it got me through the first few months of lockdown so where well, it was definitely a good thing um so yeah that's just the basic how you do how you do it uh, if i do get going on patreon i am wanting to do some uh, craft alongs and things like that and uh, um english paper piecing is one of the ideas that i've had to do obviously i want to do clay and all the other types of crafts that i've already done on the channel um, but i want to show you all of the things i do not just the ones that have become the most popular within you know the uh, stream of um viewers that i've got because when i look at the analytics in my youtube channel there's probably about half of my uh viewing traffic is people who's not subscribed so they're either searching for something that's different or have been suggested so i want to try and have different things in because that's why i called it becca's crafts because i do lots of different crafts not just you know quilling and claying and things like that and so far i've only been showing you the ones that I've thought that those people want to see but I think there might be other people out there that want to see the other stuff that I do and if you don't then you don't need to watch which I don't mind that's just my view on it that's why I'm wanting to do Ooh. sorry I can I can just see the circle in my eyes uh, it's why I want to do Patreon just so that I can do things a little bit more streamlined and do extra content uh, if people want to view it so that's the plan how soon it'll be coming i don't know we're still sort of uh, working out the kinks of it but i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have any questions pop them in the comments i'm happy to answer them as i always am and if you like the video give me a thumbs up if you're not subscribed if you can uh, would consider subscribing that'd be appreciated and if you do subscribe click that notification bell and then you'll know whenever i release a new video and you'll never miss out on anything so thanks for watching and happy new year and i'll see you soon Bye.